good morning. And I'd like to thank uh, CSO for inviting me to here to present this uh, talk and allogen allogenic smile integral implantation for correction of moderate to high hyperopia. And this is my disclosures. As we all know that the LASIK for low hyperopia has been working well, but the LASIK for hyperopia higher than plus four or five are often associated with problems like uh, small optical zone or regression or visual quality problems. So additive procedures like uh, uh, lentical implantation may have its advantages. For example, the, 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 the changes of curvature at the end, at the here is less critical or less obvious compared to LASIK. So, theoretically, the additive procedures may have larger optical zone and they are no longer limited by the corneal thickness and they have a lot of other uh, advantages making it a more promising uh, procedure for the correction of high propia and is removable. Especially we, now, smile is getting more and more popular, uh, so the lenticle is the, very easily available. Actually, there are many ways of putting a lenticle inside the cornea. Uh, it can be put inside a pocket through a small incision like the we are doing uh, uh, in the smile surgery. But the problem with this technique is that it requires a, a more sophisticated skill set and it's not easy to manipulate and this is very hard to enhance uh, if there is a, a regression or, or, or under correction or high order operations. Actually, uh, a few years ago, Dr. Porton I did a pilot study on this approach. He put a minus 10.5 diopter smile lenticle into an aphagic eye uh, with 11 and quarter diopters. But the repose of refraction turned out to be plus six. In other words, only half of the uh, attempted, achieve, uh, attempted correction had been achieved. Why? When we look at the, the, the uh, OCT map, we can see actually in the pocket, this lenticle is actually pushing the tissue in both directions both anterior and posterior, and this is also confirmed by the topography. So, this is, might not be a, an ideal uh, uh, technique for implanting a lenticle. Actually, there are other techniques. The lenticle can also be put on top of this uh, uh, corneal stroma, like what we do with the epicardophagia. The advantage of this technique is that it's minimally uh, invasive and it's totally reversible. But the problem with this is this uh, slow recovery and the high risk of epithelial ingrowth. Of course, this is not easy to enhance because it's, a, uh, it's a, a, a surface ablation. Uh, the other technique is that we can use it. We, we can put the, the lenticle under a flap like what we do with the LASIK. It's easy to operate and it, it, it can be removed and it can be easily enhanced in, case, in the case of need. And of course, the problem with this are the flap complications like LASIK. So here I'd like to present two cases uh, using this these two different techniques. Case number one is a 22-year female with a very high high broke. It's a, she was a very high high broke. But when we look at her pre-op data, you can see her case are, are very high and a very shallow AC. So she's not a good candidate for either LASIK or ICL. Of course, lens exchange is an option, but considering her younger age and also uh, 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 we, we, we thought that the, uh, the, the, uh, 
a corneal approach would be safer for her. So this is her uh, topography pre-op, very high K. So we decided to do the additive uh, implantation. So the uh, lenticle was from a smile donor and the surgical tests were not negative and the important consents were obtained from both the donor and the recipient. We use the uh, epicarical fakia approach in this case. This, this, we, first we did a total guided PTK of 60 microns, of 6.6 uh, .6 diopters, uh, 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 millimeters here. This PTK not only removes the, 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 the epithelium, but also serves as a guide concentration of this lenticle. So we put the lenticle on top of the exposed corneal stroma and let it dry adequately in the air and that's all. Uh, and finally at the conclusion of the surgery put a contact lens on top. This is a uh, post-op topography. The, 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 the recovery was very slow. You can see there are a lot of irregularities early at the uh, post-op. This is one week, uh, uh, one month. Still, there are some irregularities over there. But afterwards, it finally get very get uh, become very very regular uh, uh, stiffening in the center. So, in this patient, at ten months after surgery, her uncorrected visual acuity was 0.5, which was her pre-op BCVA. This, this uh, was our first case in our series and considering her high K and fearing her cornea to become too steep, we didn't fully rec uh, correct her. Uh, so we just put it um, plus seven diopters in her eyes. So as we expected, she was a little bit un undercorrected, but her vision was good enough. And this is her seat lamp picture. And the MS39 shows a very regular stiffening at the center. And there is a corresponding thick thinning of the epithelium in the center because the curvature here is, is um, it's changed, it's increased. And we can also notice the very big angle cava here in this patient because it's a, a quite common in high, high, high probes. And this uh, is the MS39 image. You can see the lenticle is close, is uh, just under the epithelium. And this is a very clear image. And the image, the picture under, uh, uh, here in the bottom, is the OCT acquired by Another device, the, the, one of the CSO's competitors, you can see there are less detailed information in the image. So we can see the, a big difference between these two pictures. But there's a very unique uh, mode of display for the MS39. This is so-called anamorphic display. Here we can see that the lenticle is under the, uh, the epithelium. There is uh, some irregularities on the surface of the lenticle but also here shows how powerful epithelium is to smooth out everything this smooth the area uh, the, the, the irregularities here and also there is some thickening at the edge of the, the, the lenticle here uh, the case number two is a 30 year old male who is a moderate hypo um, her uh, his uncorrected vision was still very good because he uh, has very strong accommodation. But he <coughs> has easily get over visual fatigue, so he wants to, to get rid of his glasses. And also, again, he's not a good candidate for either ICL or LASIK. So we decided to do this uh, lentical uh, implantation for his correction. In in this case, we use a, the uh, flap technique, which is uh, 
are very similar to the like procedure that Pro Professor Thaler described. We created a, one a 120 micron flap first and put a lenticle on top of the, 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 the stroma and put the flap back, uh, very, very much like a LASIK procedure. And here is the surgical video. Oh. Uh, stuck. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry for this. Excuse me? not working again oh okay uh, uh, I cannot play the video I don't uh, for, oh okay uh, this is a lenticle that, that, that I put on on top of the stroma centering on the first Bakinji reflex and again we need to uh, let it air dry to for a couple of minutes uh, after it's uh, relatively dehydrated and uh, secured on the on a, on a, on a, on a, a stroma, oh. sorry for the computer. Yeah, we carefully absorb the excessive fluid in the in the face and let the the lenticle dry. Oh. Oh. Here you can see the lenticle is become um, uh, is becoming dehydrated and secured on the on the stroma bed, and then like the uh, uh, like what we're doing on uh, for LASIK, we put a drop of fluid and then replace the the flap. Here it's important to avoid irrigating the interface because it's a uh, it's get, the the the, uh, the lenticle can be very slippery, and this is a oh, ah sorry 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 for this, but this is a much, pretty much the how this the, the the procedure is done. After surgery, we can, uh, on day one, we can still see the, the lenticle in the cornea, in the stroma, but with time, it becomes less visible. And again, it takes some time to recover. You can see initially there is some residual astigmatism, but after a certain period of time, <coughs> it becomes very much, very uh, regular. And with this OCT image, you can see that the flap, uh, the, this uh, uh, lenticle is under the flap in the stroma. Hello. And this is an uh, anamorphic display. We can also see a similar change of epithelium on top of the lenticle. Again, we can see a very regular stiffening area in the center of the very big optical zone and also a corresponding uh, thinning areas of the epithelium in the center. Very important uh, advantage of this technique is the this difference map shows that after surgery the posterior surface is virtually unchanged. So there's no change of the posterior surface. And in this case uh, <coughs> 15 months after surgery, the patient has a very good visual quality, uh, visual acuity, and refraction in the right eye, but there is still a little bit of residual astigmatism in the left eye. Here, you can see it. So we decided to do an enhancement for this patient. We decided to do a topo guided ablation touch-up for this uh, left eye. Actually, we it was done uh, only two weeks ago before I came here. 
the flap can be easily relifted as we did for a laser gain uh, 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 enhancement. And after relifting the flap, you can see the lenticle is still here, adhered very, very securely up here to the stroma. So we did the uh, eczema laser ablations on top of the lenticle. And two weeks after surgery, we can see there is a tremendous improvement of the, the topography, uh, the, 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 the residual astigmatism uh, is almost gone, and the patient ends up with very good uncorrected visual acuity and very good refraction. So actually th these are two of our series of 11 eyes uh, in the past, a few, past one and a half years. Uh, we have 11 eyes of high probia, uh, very high high probia with an average refraction of plus 7 from plus 5 to plus 10. And all the follow-up were, uh, were longer than one year. This, this, is a, uh, this chart shows the, the results of our series. You can see that most of our patients got uncorrected visual, visual acuity equal or better than their pre-op best corrected visual acuity. And their refractions are good. Of course, residual astigmatism are fairly common. So if with the like procedure, with the like technique, it can be easily uh, enhanced if needed, like what we did in our case number two. So in summary, the additive procedures uh, for moderate to high hyperopic are very promising, especially using this uh, like technique. Uh, and with this um, now so many uh, smile lenticles available, I think this is a very safe procedure. And for evaluating the, uh, the post-op uh, results of our patients, the MS39 provides a very comprehensive detailed information, which are, in, are superior to other competitors, other, other OCT devices, in my opinion, uh, which is a very uh, much a, the essential for the evaluation of this whole procedure. Thank you very much. I think this is the end. So this is my last slide, I think. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm. Mm. Any, any questions? What do you think about uh, to preserve the myopic lenticle?